Hey, how's it going guys? This is Dave2D and this is my review of the 2015 edition of the Razer Blade. Now, if you don't know of Razer, they make gaming peripherals, so things like uh, headphones, headsets, keyboards, mice, basically anything to do with PC gaming, they are all over it. And they also make a line of notebooks called the Blades and the Razer Blade is one of them. Now, Razer's products are usually quite well made, but they also come in at a price premium and the Blade is no exception. So this notebook comes in with a Quad HD touchscreen, a GTX 970M, 16 gigs of RAM, 128 gig drive, and a 2.6 gigahertz i7. And all of this coming in at $2,200, which is pretty darn steep for a notebook. So I've had this thing for a week and a half. I've played a lot of games on it, probably more than I should have in the past week, but I just had to do it. Here's my review. Packaging is definitely one of Razer's strengths. They just make their boxes and packaging look super cool. It's a black box with fake carbon fiber on it and the green accents make it look like it's something out of Tron. And when you pop that lid, that notebook looks extra cool in there. The exterior of the razor blade feels like black anodized aluminum. In terms of the design though, I'm not saying that they ripped off Apple, but they ripped off Apple. This thing looks very similar to a MacBook. The bottom of the notebook is also the black aluminum, feels good. Now the rubber feet that run along the length of the notebook are made of this surprisingly soft rubber. I also tried to peel off the rubber just to see how good the adhesive was. It didn't come off, but I didn't try too hard because it's a review unit and I really didn't want to damage it. The fan intake is really obvious on the underside. Now I'm not sure if this makes the fans more audible, but it did make me wonder. Like all black colored electronics, fingerprints and dust show up really easily on this thing but I noticed something else that was really weird. The texture on the aluminum is just rough enough that anytime I touched it with my hands, I would basically leave bits of skin cells all over it. Now it's kind of gross and weird, right? I know my hands are really dry right now because it's the winter, but every time I touched this thing, I was literally leaving trails of skin on it. It does wipe off really easily with a damp cloth, but there's definitely something about the texture that makes it a little more abrasive than you might imagine. On the left side of the notebooks, there's a combo headphone microphone jack, two USB 3.0s and a hole for the AC adapter. On the other side, there's another USB 3, an HDMI, and a lock slot. So if you notice, there's no slot for an SD card. And now it is a gamer notebook, and I guess gamers don't use SD cards, but it'd be nice to have one. In terms of its height, it's very similar to the MacBook Pro Retina 15. Even the thickness of the screen and the chassis are very similar between the two. So you can see the overall size of this thing. On the top of the pile, we have the MacBook Air. In the middle is the 2015 Razer Blade. And on the bottom is a MacBook Pro Retina 15. There's no light indicator to tell you when the AC adapter has been plugged in. You have to look on screen for that. The AC adapter is 150 watts. It's actually bigger than I thought it would be. It's not big by any means, but it's just not super small. And there is a little light on the front to tell you when it's receiving power from the wall. All in all, it's pretty plain. There's an LED on the front of the notebook that's normally off. It pulses green when it's asleep. It lights up red when it's low on battery. And when you close the lid, it lights up white. The Chiclet keyboard feels really good. I personally love the keyboard on MacBooks. I think they're the gold standard for notebook keyboards, but this one actually feels better. It's not a mechanical keyboard, but it feels more tactile and clicky than a regular chiclet keyboard. My only real complaint is the positioning of the direction keys. So if you notice the up and down arrow are kind of squished together. I'm used to an up arrow that's positioned higher than my left and right keys, but after using it for a few days, I got used to it. I did quite a bit of typing and a lot of gaming on this thing, and I have to say this is one of the best, if not the best, notebook keyboard I've ever used. It feels really good. It also has bright green backlighting, which is kind of cool, and you can control that with 15 levels of brightness. I don't know why you would need 15 levels of brightness on this thing, but that's what they give you. Now Razer markets this keyboard as having this anti-ghosting feature. So if you don't know what that is, that's basically the ability to press down on a lot of keys at once. So if you're face rolling your keyboard in a game, you want to make sure your computer picks up every one of your keystrokes. So I tested the razor blade and it really does have anti-ghosting. I was able to press a ton of keys down without any problems. And just out of curiosity, I tried this on my MacBook and I could only get like six or seven keys down at once. Now this has never actually been a problem for me, but then I realized maybe this is why I'm so bad at games. Okay, enough about keyboards. The trackpad feels really good on this thing. It's got a very similar texture to the Apple trackpad, but it does have the addition of two physical buttons, which I thought would be really cool, but I don't like it that much. And I'm not sure if it's the quality of the buttons or if I'm just not used to it, but they actually felt really cheap to me. Here's a little clip of what it sounds like. It just feels and sounds really plasticky to me. I don't know. Now the Quad HD screen on this computer is really nice. It's 14 inches, so it's kind of in the middle of the road. 
but it looks crisp and the colors look quite accurate. It's hard to capture the quality of the screen on camera, but it does look really nice. Now I'm not a big fan of touchscreen on notebooks and desktops, but it feels just as good as any other touchscreen notebook I've used. So I'm not sure if you guys noticed in the earlier footage, but this notebook has a gloss screen that is very reflective. And I thought it was weird at first because I use a MacBook Pro regularly and that thing has a gloss screen as well, but I'm not bothered by the reflections on that. So I couldn't really figure it out at first and I thought it might be screen brightness or something, but it turns out that the Apple screen has some kind of coating or a tint of some sort that reduces the reflection significantly. It's not a huge problem, but it's something to keep in mind if you have a lot of windows where you would normally use this thing. So obviously I should devote a section of this review to gaming. Here's the thing. There's gonna be a lot of sites and reviews out there that are gonna throw numbers and benchmarks and frame rate and all that crap, but I'm not gonna spend the video doing that because I feel like numbers and charts are better for a website than a YouTube video. What I can tell you is this, if you wanna play games at the native resolution of 3200 by 1800, you're gonna have a bad time at around 40 frames per second. Unless you wanna play on really low settings, but that's not a lot of fun. But at 1920, 1080, games run really well on this thing. And that's what I played most of my games on. And quite frankly, you can't tell that much of a difference when you're playing on this screen this size. So when playing at 1920 by 1080, every single game I played was running really, really well. We're talking 90 frames per second or higher on pretty high settings. And to me, that's friggin' awesome. This thing's obviously designed for games and it plays them really well. The one thing I did notice though, is that some games you have to do a bit of tweaking in the video settings to get it to display properly. Now I'm not sure if that's because the drivers are immature or if there's something going on with Windows 8.1, but in general, this thing's a total dream to play games with. There might be other notebooks that can play games better, but the Razer Blade looks really good doing it. I just wanna briefly talk about battery life. I got about five and a half hours with light usage. So that's screen at half brightness, just mild web browsing, nothing crazy, five and a half hours. And watching movies straight off the drive, I got about four and a half hours, a little bit less than that. And when I was playing Heroes of the Storm at max brightness and max settings, a little bit over an hour and a half. I think your mileage might vary depending on the game you're playing, but I imagine playing a game on battery will get you one to two hours worth of game time. There's a speaker on each side of the keyboard. They sound pretty loud, and the bass actually sounds pretty good for a notebook speaker. Here's what they sound like turned up. The fans are basically silent when the computer's idle. It's around 20 decibels and you can't hear anything. When the computer is doing some moderate activity like watching YouTube videos or a movie, the fan kicks in a little bit and it's around 30 decibels. But when this thing's going full tilt in a game, sometimes that fan hits 50 decibels. That's really loud. But this computer gets really hot, so it's probably a good thing. Okay, so to demonstrate this heat, I borrowed a Fleur 1, which is a thermal camera, from my friend. So there's three notebooks here. On the left is a razor blade. In the middle is a Dell Inspiron 7000, the 15 inch with a 4K screen. The review for that's coming out soon. And on the right is the MacBook Pro Retina 15. Now all three of these are running a benchmark program in the background. I apologize for the grainy footage, but you can see how hot the razor blade gets. The two cool spots on the left and right of the notebook correspond to the fans. Now all three of these notebooks had their fans going at full blast, but you can see that that razor blade is pretty darn hot. Okay, so my overall thoughts on the 2015 razor blade, let's do a recap. It's got a touchscreen display that's 3200 by 1800. On the inside, it's got one of the best notebook keyboards I've ever used, and a really good trackpad with two physical buttons. The buttons feel kind of cheap to me, but they're there if you want them. The two speakers on the side are loud, and the bass is surprisingly present on these guys. Underneath the hood, the Razer Blade's rocking a GTX 970M with three gigs of video RAM. It's one of the fastest mobile cards in the market right now, and it makes good use of that Quad HD screen. The Core i7 runs at 2.6 gigahertz. It's fast, but when you combine it with that video card, this machine gets really hot. But I think that's the price you have to pay for mobile performance. Razer gives this thing 16 gigs of RAM, which is plenty for basically any kind of game you'd play on this. Powering this all is a 70 watt battery that gives us a eh, kind of modest battery life. And for 2200 bucks, Razer gives you all of this and 128 gigs of solid state storage. But in 2015, a 128 gig drive isn't that spacious. You're probably gonna wanna bump it up to 256 or more. And a 256 configuration is already coming in at 2400, so it's very expensive. So who is this notebook for? If you are a gamer, like a hardcore gamer, and you love games, and you need portability, and most importantly, you can afford it, this is for you because quite frankly, there's nothing else out there quite like this. An ultra portable, super powerful gaming notebook. Anyone else, I suggest you look elsewhere because there's probably a notebook out there that's a better fit for you. But if you're gonna get this, I hope you're doing some serious gaming while traveling a lot because that's what it's for. 
As for me, well, I'm gonna miss it when I have to send it back to Razer, but I've definitely had my fill of getting owned at 90 frames per second in Dota. So that's it for this review. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, please hit that like button or subscribe if you can. It really helps me out and lets me know which videos you guys liked and stuff. And the Dell Inspiron 7000, it's sitting on the floor right there. Uh, the review is almost done. I'm just working out some last minute details with Dell. And if you guys subscribe, you'll see immediately when that video goes live. So sub if you can. It's been nice. I'll see you guys next time.